Hi, I'm Claire and these are my most anticipated book releases for the next few months. This is one of my favorite videos to make always. I am so, so excited to share these books with you. I've got 15 books to go through, so let's get started straight away. I will just say very quickly that the publication dates for these books are always subject to change. I will let you know if there is a difference between UK and US publication date if I know about it. Starting in April, we have Bonds of Brass by Emily Skrutsky. This comes out from Del Rey on the 7th of April in the US, but unfortunately it doesn't look like it's coming out in the UK at all. So I'm definitely going to have to order this one online to come to me from the US because I absolutely want to read this. I am so, so hyped for it. This novel is inspired by Finn Poe fan fiction or was Finn Poe fan fiction and then was reworked into an original work. So I'm super excited about that. The summary says a young pilot risks everything to save his best friend, the man he trusts most in the world and might even love, only to learn that he's secretly the heir to a brutal galactic empire. So you can see where the Finn Poe comparison comes from. I'm very, very excited for that one. You got Gotta love an awesome pilot, you know? Next up on the 14th of April, we've got The Book of Coley by M.R. Carey. This comes out from Orbit and it is the first in a new trilogy called The Rampart Trilogy that's all set to come out during 2020. So they've clearly already been written and they'll be released every like three or four months this year. M.R. Carey is of course the author of The Girl with All the Gifts, one of my favorite books ever. So I'm very excited to be getting a new book from him and in fact a new trilogy. This is set in a post-apocalyptic world with creepy murder plants. Apparently humans have played God as we are wont to do and tried to alter uh, fauna and flora to like survive better in the climate apocalypse or something and then of course that went wrong and nature turned against us and you know post-apocalyptic novel. Might not be the best time to be reading that right now, but you know, I'll be reading it at some point. It sounds great. On the 16th of April, we've got a sequel that I'm so, so, so hyped for, and that is The Last Emperor by John Scalzi. It is the final book in his Interdependency trilogy. It comes out from Tor books and I cannot wait to see how this story wraps up. The series started with the Collapsing Empire in which we got introduced to this galactic empire called the Interdependency in which planets are linked by a method of travel called the flow. It's faster than light travel. It's what keeps these planets connected with each other, keeps them trading with each other. But of course what happens in the first book is that the flow starts to collapse. These connections between planets start to close up and everybody is terrified terrified because those planets have all specialized to such an extent that they can't be self-sustaining anymore and they really rely on the flow to just survive. So I don't want to say anything more and give away any potential spoilers but I really enjoy this series. It's fast-paced, there is a lot happening, the characters are really really great. Just can't wait to see how it wraps up. Next up, we've got a romance novel with a really fascinating premise. Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye comes out on the 21st of April from Avon. And it is the story of a viral live tweeting and what actually like goes on behind the scenes. It's one of those instances where somebody witnesses two complete strangers being cute, decides to live tweet it and then the internet loses its mind. And so our protagonist is the girl who's being live tweeted about without her knowledge or consent. And then all of a sudden, like, she's really famous on the internet for talking to a hot man in a cafe. She doesn't know that guy. She's not interested in that guy in any case, but the internet will not shut up about it. And so she has to figure out how to deal with that. And she does that with the help of a friend of hers who takes her away to his family's remote cabin. And there romance shall ensue. I'm super excited about this one. I love to see a romance novel or a contemporary novel like with stuff about the internet and virality and like how that affects everybody's lives. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. 
Next up in April, we have Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. This is the first book in a new series called The Hollow Crown. It comes out on the 28th of April from Harder and Starren. And this is the story of a young woman who was trained to like retrieve memories from the enemies of the king. She has this magic where she can steal people's memories, but after some disastrous things were done using her gift, she is now working as a rebel spy, spying against the crown. I love the premise of this. I'm getting real epic fantasy vibes from the setting and the descriptions that we get in the synopsis of like the orders of spies and the orders of mages working with the king. Like it sounds great. I really, really enjoyed Zoraida Cordova's urban fantasy novel, Labyrinth Lost, that had some really great mythology woven through that. The world building was really cool. I can't wait to see what she does with like secondary world fantasy setting and being able to just like make up all the things because that's her job because she's a writer and she's really good at it. So I can't wait to read her new book. Next up, we have Goldilocks by Laura Lamb, which comes out on April 30th in the UK from Headline Publishing and on May 5th in the US from Orbit Books. This is about an all-female mission to go and explore a potential habitable planet in the Goldilocks zone where there's conditions similar to Earth and humans could live. But of course, since this is a science fiction thriller, someone is hiding something, there are secrets and shenanigans and things go wrong because because of course you have five people in a spaceship going far, far away. Something wrong must happen. I'm really interested in this, which is weird because I don't usually gravitate towards thrillers at all, but this one's in space and I like things that are in space. Next up, we have the brand new Murderbot novel, Network Effect by Martha Wells. It comes out on the 5th of May from Tor.com Publishing. And I am so, so, so excited for it. I love the Murderbot novellas and I cannot wait for the continuation novel. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, the Murderbot novellas by Martha Wells, starting with All Systems Red, are about a security unit android that calls itself Murderbot. It has deactivated the security protocol that we're controlling it so that it can have free will and what it decides to do with that free will is to like hang out and chill and watch some TV and not talk to humans like avoid small talk at all cost it's not here to make friends because friends and feelings and humans are complicated so just TV TV is much, much easier to deal with. I'm so excited for this new novel in which we will encounter characters that we know from the novellas when Murderbot's human associates, because Murderbot doesn't have friends, because friends would be complicated and involve feelings. So human associates, when they get uh, captured and then another person from Murderbot's past, who's definitely not a friend, comes to ask for help, then a murder ball has to decide to, you know, stop hanging out and watching TV and take drastic action rather than just waiting around. There is one line in Murderbot's point of view in the synopsis, and that line is, I'm usually alone in my head, but that's where 90 plus percent of my problems are. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave you with that. Deal with the Devil by Kit Roker comes out on May 12th from Tor Books. And this is an intriguing mix of post-apocalypse science fiction and romance, which I'm super, super excited for. Kit Roker is a super well-established romance and erotica author duo team. And I can't wait to see what these writers do with like a science fictional premise. This is set in a post-apocalyptic America and because it's a romance, we follow two main characters. One of them is an information broker who runs with a crew of mercenary librarians and the other is a bitter battle-weary super soldier who leads an elite squad of, again, super soldier who have to run away because they're being asked to murder innocents and they don't want to do that. And these two groups kind of have to work together to manage all of their escapes. The series itself is called Mercenary Librarians, so I'm assuming it's going to work on the same model as a lot of romance series do, where 
there is a group of friends or colleagues or whatever that is set up and then each one of the people in that group has a book of their own to like explore their character and their romances. I'm so excited to see a model like that coming to science fiction publishing because there is a lot of science fiction post-apocalypse romance that's being published in the romance genre that's not being like marketed as sci-fi and fantasy but definitely has those elements so super glad to be seeing some of that come through in the sff genre on may 19th we've got this coven won't break by isabel sterling this one comes out from razorbill and it is the sequel to these witches don't burn which i read and really really enjoyed so i'm looking forward to the sequel to this i believe it's a duology so it's done after this one now i don't want to give too too much away about what happened in the first book because a lot of stuff happens in the first book the series is ya urban fantasy our protagonist hannah is a witch she has a coven that her family go to and like a lot of their friends in town who are also secretly witches go to but then it's also concealed from the like general population and Hannah has to deal with magical problems like traces of creepy dangerous blood magic at the same time as real world problems like my ex-girlfriend is actually still a member of my coven and I have to see her all the time even though I don't want to and also there's a cute girl in town and also I can't tell my best friend about magic being real all that kind of stuff in the this next book the only thing that I'm gonna say because I don't want to give away too many spoilers or anything is that they are dealing with a witch hunter that is coming after the coven so I can't wait to see how this goes because I was quite surprised by the end of the first book didn't expect it to go where it actually went but it, it did it <laughs> it's like okay I want to know what happens now <laughs> Next up we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This comes out on May 26th from Delacorte. This is way high fantasy. We follow a young woman called Decca. She is coming up to her 16th birthday and there is going to be an initiation ritual to go through on her 16th birthday to decide her place in the village. But she has a really bad feeling about it because she's always had like, supernatural intuitions and premonitions and she thinks because of that she might not be given a place in the village and indeed when the ceremony comes and they do the blood ceremony to give her her place in the village she bleeds gold instead of bleeding red and that kind of spells out her doom but of course because we need the book to be longer than its introduction sequence a mysterious woman comes to Decca and says to her that you know there is a choice she could stay and suffer her fate in the village but she could also just leave and go join the army of girls just like her who are near immortals with magic powers all bleeding gold the gilded ones from the title and fight for the emperor and of course this is what Decca chooses to do and the story Story goes from there. I'm really really excited for this. It certainly sounds like a fairly traditional YA fantasy premise of you know someone coming up to the time where they have to take their place in society and then they have to you know go and find their own way because they don't actually have a place where they thought that they might. But the fact that the premise is fairly tropey doesn't actually matter if it's executed really well and I'm very very intrigued by this like gilded blood storyline and also it sounds like we're going to get this character like discovering this world and maybe doing some training. All of that sounds awesome. I'm currently reading a book where all of these things happen and loving it. So I just want more of that. Next up, we've got Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, the highly anticipated second book in the Locked Tomb series, the sequel to Gideon the Ninth, which came out last year. This is the lesbian necromancers in space story, in case you missed it. I really enjoyed the first book. Can't wait to check out the second book in the series. Harrow the Ninth actually comes out on June the 2nd from Tor.com Publishing. I've started to see a lot of publicity around this book and a lot of marketing around it pictures of it cannot wait I don't really know what's gonna happen in it given stuff that happened in Gideon I don't want to go into any kind of spoilers but what I will say is I really love the atmosphere of these books like even though it is definitely science fiction and the necromancy is definitely based in science it has this amazing like 
ponderous epic fantasy feel to it. I just enjoyed Gideon the Ninth so much I can't wait for the sequel. Moving on to June, we've got two very exciting releases on the 9th of June. Phoenix Extravagant by Yoon Harley comes out from Solaris and it is set in a world where for generations this massive empire has spread its powers using magically animated automata. Basically in order to make all of their like I guess dragon soldiers move. There's a dragon on the cover. So I'm assuming there's dragons. I'm hoping there's dragons because dragons are great. But to make their magic automata move, they use sigils painted on them. And our protagonist is a sigil painter, except that the magical substance that they use to paint those sigils dries up and they go on a quest to find out what happened to the supply of Phoenix extravagant that allows them to animate these objects with magic. It sounds bonkers! It sounds so bonkers and the cover is so beautiful and it's Yoon Ha Lee who's writing so many of my friends have loved and I still have yet to read The Machineries of Empires so I would love to actually start reading a new, I don't think it's a series, I think it's a standalone. At least Goodreads is not indicating in any way that it might be a series, so I'm very intrigued by this because it could be a great way to start reading Yoon Harley's work. Also on June the 9th, we've got This Is All Your Fault by Amina May Safi. This one comes out from Faywell and Friends. And this is a YA novel focusing on three young women who are trying to save their indie bookstore. It's apparently set over just one day, which is really, really cool. Uh, I've previously read Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. Really, really enjoyed that. That was uh, FF Romance. That was kind of a little bit based on uh, Paris and Rory from Gilmore Girls, which I absolutely absolutely loved so I can't wait to see what she does with this premise of three girls trying to save their indie bookstore which hashtag relatable on June 23rd, we've got The Order of Pure Moon Reflected in Water by Zen Cho. This is a Tor.com novella that they are describing as a found family wusha fantasy, which sounds just amazing. The synopsis just says a bandit walks into a coffee house and it all goes downhill from here. There's also a young religious adept from The Order of the Pure Moon who decides to join a group of thieves, whether they want it or not. All of it sounds really, really fun. I love Zen Cho's writing. Sorcerer to the Crown was one of my favorite books the year that it came out. I just read the sequel, The True Queen, liked it even more than the first one. So I can't wait to read basically everything that Zen Show writes like forever. So very excited for this one. I have a review copy of it and I can't wait to get to that when we are closer to release date. And finally, also on June the 23rd, we've got A Declaration of the Rights of Magicians by H.J. Parry. This comes out from Red Hook in the US and Orbit Books in the UK. And it is historical fantasy featuring a whole bunch of like historical figures, but not White. It is set in the Age of Enlightenment and the necromancer Robespierre is calling for revolution in France whilst weather mage Toussaint Louverture is leading the enslaved peoples of Haiti in their fight to freedom. This sounds amazing. I was really, really excited for this book when I read the synopsis for it months and months ago. Since then, I have read a book by H.J. Parry. H.J. Parry's writing and like storytelling and narrative is so meta and so like thinky and crunchy. I really enjoyed what she did with like just literary characters and literary criticism and stuff cannot wait to see what she does with history and politics. And that, lovely viewers, is it. That was 15 books. That took a very, very long time to record. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I have given you many, many, many books to add to your Goodread TBRs. I'm gonna go eat some lunch because uh, I'm very hungry. I hope you could not hear my stomach rumbling <laughs> through the end bit of this video. Please let me know if there are any books that you're really excited for uh, in the next three months that I haven't mentioned in this or even later in the year because I will be continuing to do these videos every three months or so. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.